Okay, so hi there folks, we're now in our next video in the introduction to statistics and in this video we're going to have this classification of research objectives or research goals, shall we say. So each state objective can be differentiated according to the following classifications. Okay, so this will guide the researcher, which is you, to anticipate to the type of analysis and interpretation that is required of the said objective. So we have here what we call analytic goals. So what are these? So analytic goals is um, directed towards finding out, okay, finding out from the data one or more of the following attributes or characteristics of the group being studied. So we have five types of um, classification of analytic goals. So we have first is what we call the central tendency, okay, which I will we will explain um, one by one later. We have the variance in the group. We have difference within the group or difference between groups. We also have relationships within the group, and we have what we call prediction. Okay, so these are the classification of research objectives. Okay, which is um, anchored on the analytic goals. So let's talk about them one by one, and we'll start with the central tendency. So central tendency um, actually talks about the general characteristics of the group. Okay, general characteristics of the group. So to give you some examples of where or what research problems or objectives um, is talking about the central tendency, we can ask the problem to determine the mean weekly allowance of UL USLS college junior or junior um, year for the first semester of academic year 2020-2021. Okay, so that's mean weekly allowance. So this is talking about the central tendency. Another example is to determine the percentages of USLS, USLS college students who prefer an iPhone over a Samsung cell phone. So um, um, all rights reserved. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the percentages. So this is still talking about the central tendency. Okay, we prefer an iPhone over a Samsung cell phone. So those are examples wherein we are using the central tendency. Okay, one classification. Next is the variance in the group. So when you say when you talk about the variance in the group, how individual members of the group vary from the average characteristic in the group. So we are given already the average characteristic. What we're going to do is we we will measure how much okay um the individual members vary from that average characteristic so when we talk about variance some examples are to determine the age range of students in this class in the statistics class so what is the age range we have also this example to determine if the final grades in this statistics class are similar if this is if they are similar how similar uh, if they are not similar so um Maybe the variance is is kind of is kind of high. Okay, so that's when we talk about the variance of the group. Thirdly, we have difference within the group and difference between the groups. So when we talk about this, we are asking or or having this thought in mind whether or not subgroups subgroups of the group or two separate groups being studied are different or similar on certain traits investigated or being investigated. So some examples are to compare the mean number of Coke Sacto bottles, all rights reserved, <laughs> consumed in a week between the between the male and female USLS students. Also, this is one example to determine if there is any significant difference in the mean number of text messages sent in a day among the students from five different colleges of USLS. Okay, so those are different examples of of number of number three: difference within groups and difference bet, uh, with the, the, between groups rather. Fourth is relationships within groups. So, if relationships between certain variables covered in the study exist, if there's a relationship, so if if one increased, does one increase with it? So that's that's actually what we call a positive correlation. If it's a negative correlation, if one increases, the other one does the opposite, that is decreases. So some examples are to establish if there is a significant relationship between the choice of cell phone brand and the college and the college of a, a USLS student belongs to. So um, does this cell phone brand, um, you know, um, for example, just an example, iPhones, iPhones um, 
one college in USLS prefers prefers iPhones. Another college prefers Samsung phones. Another college prefers Vivo phones. So things like that. Is there a, re a relationship or not? If you're in this college, you are supposed or you are expected to have the cell phone. Th things like that. So is there any relationship or significant relationship? Um, to determine if a relationship status and final grades in statistics are independent. Okay, so um, does it does it mean that the, if you are in a relationship right now, your final grades are are high or low, or if you are single, are your grades high or low? Is there any significant? Is there any relationship, or are they independent to each other? Okay, if they are dependent, so if you are single, for example, just an example, if you're single, your final grades are high. If you are in a relationship, your final grades are low. So that's the that's dependent. If they are independent, so meaning uh, no matter what your relationship, relationship status is, your final grade is not affected. So um, this is one one good one good research to to think about. <laughs> okay, number five, prediction. So prediction talks about establishing a mathematical or statistical model to predict future outcomes. Okay, to predict future outcomes. So some examples are here. What factors influence that, sorry, that a graduate's ability to land a job within one year after graduation? So is what's the probability or what's the prediction, okay, that that a graduate, uh, a graduate of college will land a job within one year of graduation, after graduation? Second is, what is the estimated sales of a particular restaurant for next week if the present conditions hold so if if the conditions hold this week and if this continues until next week what is the estimated sales of one particular restaurant so that's that's when you will use prediction here okay so that's the five classification of research objectives okay those are fives five of them um, again um, my source here is a handout created by dr sweet rose lunaris so those are the five um, just a recall we have the first one is okay central tendency second is variance in the group third is difference within the group or difference between the groups fourth is relationships within the group and fifth is prediction okay so that's it for our video for the classification of research objectives okay thank you very much for watching